to the fantastic show. Thank you all for watching and uh, good evening. If it's the morning where you live, I know some of you aren't all in my side of the world. Well, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. We wanted to thank all of the Justin.tv viewers and all of the MondoClub.com viewers and all of the Roku viewers. Roku is a small platform cable box that you can actually put in your office or in your home. A lot of people I know actually have Roku boxes and a lot of them have said, oh hey, I've seen you on my Roku box and I didn't even realize that was you until now. So um, they realize, they, they meet me in person and then they say um, that I'm a little crazy and then they say, oh, we realized it when we saw you were crazy, so. <laughs> It's kind of funny. And uh, also, if you would like to call in on the show, a lot of people like to call in and speak their opinions. And uh, if you want to do that, you can call us at 412-567-0381. We love our callers. We love all of them. And uh, sometimes we make calls out to people. And uh, it, wouldn't it be funny if we made like a little crank call episode, like crank yankers? I would put on this like this sexy female voice and say, oh, like I would, I, it would be funny. Maybe we'll do that in the future for you guys. Also, if you want to find us on Facebook, we're at Gay Life TV. And also on Twitter, we're at GLTV. So our first bit of news here is a little bit depressing. So I'm going to say it first because it's a little depressing and I kind of want to get the depressing bits out of the way. And unfortunately, a 15 year old boy he hung himself, and it was on October 2nd. His name was Christian Adamek, and this is a picture of him right here. And he was actually arrested a week prior to his suicide. And I am guessing that his parents kind of tortured him about this, and uh, his school tortured him about this. He was actually put on the sex offender list in his state, which is quite a big big deal. He's from Huntsville, Alabama, and in Alabama they're all uh, a bit, you know, strict out there, I would think. And um, <laughs> there's, uh, they're just all a bit uh, uptight up there, I noticed, whenever I took my little visit there. And uh, he was from Sparkman High, and it was a Christian school, and I really don't think he should have been put on the sex offender list for streaking at his football game. I mean, I know he is a minor, and I know he was doing something completely terrible. I mean, showing your naked body to a bunch of adults is a little strange, and, um, but I do not think he should have been put on the sex offender list. And it's too late to change that now because he is currently not living anymore. So uh, all of our thoughts go out to Christian Adamick's family. Um, we're very sorry for your loss and uh, hopefully Christian is a little happier now in a happier place. Also, I have a recipe for all of you guys. I was actually, while I was traveling in France, it's, it's around the season for this drink. It's actually a hot cinnamon wine. I actually tried it whenever I was skiing in the French Alps, and I was also skiing in Austria in Alpe d'Huez. Oh wait, no, actually Alpe d'Huez. Was Alpe d'Huez in Austria? I, no, Saint, Saint, Saint Anton, Austria is where I skied, and Alpe d'Huez was in France. Okay, sometimes I get them mixed up. But as you're skiing, you go down, you know, the, there's these black diamonds, and there's actually, they actually build these little bars where all of the employees, they ski to work, which is really interesting. They actually ski their way to their workplace. And their number one seller is this glue wine, which is basically all it is, is to make it, is you obviously need a bottle of red wine, you need 10 whole cloves, a cinnamon stick, an orange, three-fourth a cup of sugar, and three-fourths a cup of water. It's delicious. I absolutely recommend it. 
And all you do is boil the water, the sugar, the cinnamon, and you obviously put the wine in there as well. And then you boil it until it's, you know, pretty hot. And then you actually squeeze the orange into the, um, there's the cloves with the orange right there. You squeeze the orange into the actual, uh, the actual uh, wine. And it's boiling in a pot, mind you. And you can actually poke the cloves into the orange after they're done being squeezed. And you just let that simmer for about 30 minutes. And then you have a delicious seasonal drink. It's wonderful whenever it's snowing outside because it gets you tipsy. And it's like hot cocoa, but it has alcohol in it. And it tastes absolutely delicious. It's kind of like an apple cider with a different kick to it. And I would recommend not using a really dry red wine. I would recommend using a smooth red wine, something that uh, can go well with the cinnamon taste. And um, it's absolutely delicious. I definitely recommend it. I'm going to make some for all of the staff here at Gay Life Television. Um, I don't know about tonight, but maybe I will. Well, actually, I don't have a cinnamon stick, so maybe next week. But it's a great drink to have, and it's, it's just wonderful. And we'll have a review for you next week. Also, I heard Gravity by Sandra Bullock was so, such a powerful movie. Apparently, it just came out, and it has uh, Sandra Bullock and um, the older gentleman, um, <laughs> George Clooney. And uh, they apparently made a great team. Apparently, this movie is 4.9 out of 5 stars. That's how good it was. And it... It actually got just such a good review, and uh, the gentleman who told me about it, he wanted to remain anonymous, but he almost peed himself while he was watching the movie. And he actually seen it 3D in the theaters, and he said it made you want to grab your seat as you were falling from the sky. So <laughs> it sounds kind of scary. Like, I think if I go to see this, I would probably bring, like, uh, a pillow or something just so I can hold on to it. And, um, um, yeah, so that will be very interesting. Here's a little quick sneak peeks of the movie here. And, okay, so I know some of you, well, this was actually, um, it was brought to my attention by one of my fans. He actually said, do a video on how to get rid of a stalker. He said this a few months ago. And I made a YouTube video on it, and the video was deleted by YouTube. I have no idea why. Maybe my list to get rid of a stalker was a bit strange. But um, <clears throat> it was actually um, a list that I thought was great. But this is a list that I found from a blog, a very, very popular blog. And this is a list how to get rid of a stalker. So the first thing you want to do is to distance yourself. You want to use distance to protect yourself. And if you sp suspect you may be being stalked, you know, keep a significant distance between you and the suspected stalker just, just to be safe, on the safe side. You never know what's going through a stalker's mind. Sometimes they're very dangerous people and they're only looking out to hurt you, and uh, that's something that you need to stay away from. Okay, so the second one is keep a record of all of the incidents. Any incidents that you may see as kind of repetitive and kind of like a stalkerish attitude, like if he's texting you a thousand times, don't delete your messages. Save them and maybe print them out. And just so you have evidence to prove that this person is dangerous if anyone in the um, law enforcement wants to press charges against this person and maybe file some type of protection thing for you, um, you would want to keep this as evidence. Also, always state romantic or um, social rejections clearly. Make sure that they know that you are not interested. Do not lead them on um, because you want to actually um, tell them to go away in the nicest way possible. You really don't want them to be led on. And 
an easy way to you know identify this is like if you have a friend who where a guy really likes her and she's just saying oh you're cute but she's lying to him to make him feel better you know that's leading someone on and that's exactly what you do not want to do because they actually get this fixation up in their head and it builds and builds and builds and a lot of these people are not sane and living in these times we actually the government does not treat a lot of people who have mental illness they actually let people walk around with mental illness and they just walk freely because there's no health insurance for everyone and um, maybe Obamacare will go through and maybe they will get the help they need but uh, until then <laughs> also warn the offender warn them to stay away from you that's what you really want to do you want to warn them to get away from you you want to warn them that if they do keep coming up to you that you are going to press charges against them or you are going to you know expose them to everyone and if they keep doing it then you are going to have to expose them and I will get to that in a minute um, also you want to ignore and do not respond to any further attempts so um, the the last one that I just said where you warn them next you do not want to respond so you want to basically ignore any further attempts and you just want to keep the list like I said you want to keep that information for evidence also you want to um, never attempt to reason with the stalker or he'll think that he's getting to you. He'll think that he, his tactics are actually working and he'll try harder and harder until he has you in the back of his van and he is driving you to his basement and he's gonna tie you up and um, yeah. <laughs> well, I, sorry, that's not funny, but um, yeah. Uh, always keep a cell phone on you and um, a phone is good to have only because it's good to record these images it, I mean it's also not good for the stalker to have your number but it's also good to have that evidence so if this person if he's writing you letters or something you want to keep those letters um, but text messages pictures if anything's a bit strange then you want to actually you know share that with everyone that you know you actually want to notify everyone about your situation and the identity of your stalker if if it's not known already you want to tell all of your friends you need to you know show a picture to your friends you need to be like hey this person is stalking me if this person says anything to you about me that they want to know where I am I, my throat is really dry right now <coughs> I have no idea why I think I need water but um, also change your contact information you want to do that as well you want to change all change your number change your email address I know it's a pain in the butt but you really just have to do this just so this person has no way of contacting you and just so it doesn't build up any um, harsh feelings within yourself because I know it can get a little displeasing having all of these uncomfortable messages coming to you and uh, a lot of times it actually does come to you oh my goodness look at this my producer brought me water I was I was feeling a little choked up here and uh, my producer brought me some water so I'm just gonna take a little sip here I'm treated like a queen here I love it love it wonderful <laughs> also some butt exercises I actually learned from someone in my um, my workplace here that uh, if you actually this is a, a sexual thing but if you actually eat for, he didn't I don't know if he wants me to tell you guys this or not because I think it might be a secret but he actually said that if you eat fruit two times a week it makes your butt taste good <laughs> for anyone who's into that rimming Thing. I mean I, I know that's a very big thing in the gay community a lot of people like to rim people I've honestly have I've never rimmed anyone because I am afraid of that part of the body <laughs> and it's funny because a lot of people will say oh I, I can rim people but I just can't stand feet but I mean you know 
your your butt is kind of like where you know it all comes out, and your feet you're just walking in in, in them. And uh, my friend actually told me to that there's an exercise where you get on one knee, and then you put your hands at the ground, you straighten your back, and then you just lift your leg about 15 times, and you do that to each leg in episodes of probably about. I would say I would say do it about 10 times, so you're at 150, and it makes your butt look voluptuous and round and absolutely amazing. Maybe, uh, make an exercise video for you guys. Maybe that's what I'll do. I love me some water. Water is fabulous. Also, a few extra beauty steps that you can take. Um, a few extra beauty steps you can take. Whenever you're trying to look good for you know a certain event, or if you're going to a modeling agency, I know I was actually taught that modeling agency. A few of these tips were brought to my attention by a few of the models. Whenever I was modeling for Divine Models in London, they actually mentioned that you can actually get this product called Preparation H, and you have to get the version that's in Canada. You can't get the kind that is from the USA because the Canada Canadian one actually has a product in it that um, it actually is banned in the USA. Apparently, that's what I was told. And you can still order this on Amazon. So you can actually go to Amazon and you can order this Preparation H from Canada. It's actually a lot more expensive over there because of this secret ingredient that's in there. But you put it under your eyes, and any discoloration, any baggage, any redness, any blueness that you have under your eyes, it will automatically disappear. And you'll look 10 years younger. And it lasts for probably about you know 12 hours. But uh, so obviously it doesn't last for a lifetime because this is a product that is a temporary product. It's made for hemorrhoids. So basically it's, it goes on your bottom and all of those little gigantic bumps that are sticking out of your anus, it, uh, it's supposed to shrink them down. So can you only imagine what that does under your eyes? That's amazing. And witch hazel under your eyes is really great as well. Also, wear moisturizer at night. You should always wear a moisturizer with vitamin E in it. And uh, vitamin C is good as well if you can actually have two of them, like both of them together, or even D as well. Um, it really, really brightens up the face and it really makes it look younger and smoother and absolutely wonderful. And also, one thing that I used to do whenever I was living in England, I don't know why I stopped, but if you actually put honey all over your face for 15 minutes a day and you do this for a month, your skin will be baby smooth. <laughs> I did that and um, I, I'm not sure why I stopped doing it. Maybe I just, I guess I totally forgot about it until now. So I'm going to actually do that. I'm going to go buy some honey and put it all over my face and I'll go to the grocery store tonight and I'll actually go and get some cinnamon too some cinnamon sticks for my wine. Also, any redness from shaving, you're going to want to use Vaseline on that. So if you have any redness, like I know I get some redness like right around the mouth line at the edges here whenever I shave there because that's where the skin is mo the most sensitive. And also around here whenever I shave sideways, it actually gets a little sensitive. And I actually just finished shaving. And I have a little bit of redness, but I, I didn't shave up here, so I guess that's not really where I shaved. So I guess that's just red for, um, I don't know, probably from taking a really hot shower. And also, sugar scrub on your hands. It makes your hands very, very smooth. It's really nice to meet someone for the first time and shake their hand, and their hand be absolutely smooth like a baby. And especially if you do a hard handshake with a smooth hand, it's just bliss, it's just great. And there's a sugar scrub that you can actually buy. You can get some anywhere from any of your local places. And, uh, but I definitely recommend Luva. I definitely recommend their sugar scrub called The Beach. That's a really great one. And um, 
So, uh, also, use some bronzer. I know I am guilty of this because I do not use any bronzer because my skin is pretty pale. And uh, I honestly enjoy being pale, but um, now that I'm on TV, I am starting to see that I'm a little too pale. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm either going to get a, a membership to a tanning salon or I'm going to start using a bronzer, which um, a bronzer may really help. And I believe we are actually going to go to break. Um, it's a, it's been about 15 minutes, so we're going to do a little break here for you guys. And uh, I'll be right back, and I'll give you a few of my, my, more of my tips. So we will be right back after this short break. just talking to you about how to beauty yourself up with eight extra steps and um, something strange just happened. Have you ever gotten that, that feeling where you get this ringing in one of your ears and it just like rings and it's just like tss, it's just like this ringing sound. I had that and I actually had that once and I actually had it on a bus and I was like oh my god I'm gonna fall over. <laughs> Because sometimes it's so intense that you think you're having like some sort of brain aneurysm. And um, so if anyone knows anything about that, maybe tell me about that. And maybe tell me that I have a uh, brain aneurysm coming on. <laughs> that would be very helpful for my future. <laughs> okay, so I just have three more things in the how to beauty yourself up. And uh, so there's this product that you can buy from Lush. It's called Feeling Younger. It's actually this, it's a very white product. It looks like a very, it's just white. It looks like white paint. There it is right there on the screen. And you can actually put that under your eyes and it actually makes it so your eyes are so light that you look so young. I'll wear it on next week's show and you'll see what I mean. But it basically really lightens up the eyes and it really just makes it look spectacular and it's really just a wonderful product and I love it and whenever you're mixing it with some bronzer it actually really looks really nice whenever it's a lighter bronze around your eyes because you know a lot of people you know that's what they do that's their secret they sometimes whenever they go in tanning beds they use a special lotion around their eyes so it doesn't make it as dark as the rest of their face so um, there, there's a beauty secret right there. And also, use shower gloves. Instead of a rag, you should use some gloves. This actually gets rid of a lot of bumps on the skin, and it also gets rid of a lot. And my skin is baby smooth, and I've been using shower gloves for about, about five years now. And it gets rid of basically anything, and if you keep and it makes you feel cleaner as well, like, because you're rubbing and, you know, some of those places where, especially where you have deodorant on, you can feel it coming off because at first it's a little rough and then it starts to feel smooth. And you can't really feel that with a rag. I don't, I, I, I just can't. I mean, it's so much better with shower gloves. Also, a slight amount of mascara. Some people aren't blessed with very nice eyelashes and I think it's good to have eyelashes and so it's always good to, you know, spice them up a little bit. I don't have any on right now because I, I just didn't feel like putting any on but it's uh, always a nice little extra beauty. It, it just makes your eyes really stand out unless you have really, really big eyelashes already, but um, I would definitely recommend brown because black sometimes looks a little unnatural and um, 
So brown is probably your best bet, and you want to use the kind that extends your eyelashes. It will actually say on the box whether it extends your eyelashes or not. And also, I have, uh, in other news, we have a U.S. anti-gay pastor. Uh, his name is Scott Lively. He actually said he influenced the Russian homosexual propaganda law. So now we have someone to put to blame. This is him right here. Um, he is a anti-gay pastor. His name is Scott Lively. I just wanted to repeat that just so all of you know who, who is claiming all of the responsibility for all of the Russian pro homosexual propaganda law. And he calls himself the defender of the Christian civilization. And he calls himself a hero. See, I think a lot of people are, um, they don't really understand what the definition of hero is. A hero saves people from things that are hurting them. And uh, I don't believe homosexuals are hurting anyone. So I think he is the opposite of a hero. And I thought I would announce that. Also, horrible news. Kuwait is actually using gaydar from, to ban gays from their country. They said they will be taking stricter measures that will help detect gays. So they're actually, they actually think they can detect homosexuals. And I love this map here because it has these cute little rainbows all over it. And uh, it just makes it look cute. It makes something completely horrible look adorable. And um, they have yet to say how measures will detect homosexuality. But I'm curious to know how. I'm really curious to know how they're going to do this. So um, I made a little list for them in case they ever watch this. So um, how to detect if someone is gay? Well, so this is basically how to ask someone if they're gay. So basically the first thing that you want to do is you want to ask them, what kind of clubs do you like? And you, you want to ask them, have you ever been to a strip club? Have you ever been to somewhere where there were dancers? Were they male dancers? And you just ask it casually. And um, that's step one. So basically, if you add all of these steps together and you actually get some gaydar levels going on in here, then you'll actually know that your friend is indeed a homosexual. So step two, what is your favorite TV show? <laughs> OK. I mean, he's, if he's straight, he's probably, probably most likely not going to say America's Next Top Model or uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> so um, that's uh, a little bit of gaydar there for you right there. And also Desperate Housewives is pretty gay as well um, because I know I am in love with Desperate Housewives and also Sex in the City, that's pretty gay too. And uh, so that's a, another step that you could take. Also, what music? do you like? If they like Britney Spears, then, you know, they're probably gay. <laughs> or if they like, uh, if they enjoy Lady Gaga, or if they enjoy Regina Spector, or if they enjoy, um, you know, Katie Wazel, you know, they're probably a homosexual. <laughs> so uh, these are just a few, few ideas for you, Russia. Uh, oh, well, oh, sorry, not Russia, Kuwait. Um, okay, so who is your favorite celebrity? See, this can go either way. You could say who is your favorite, like who is the sexiest celebrity, and if they say a male, then they're gay. If they say a female, then they're either hiding it or they're, you know, straight. But um, if they say their favorite celebrity is someone who is like homosexual, like RuPaul, then you're going to know that they're probably gay. <laughs> so, um, next little hint of advice. Have you ever been waxed? <laughs> you can ask them, have you ever had your anus waxed? You know, this is a little bit of a, um, a deep question. <laughs> it's a little deep there. But uh, have, have you ever been waxed? That's a, a, a nice little question. And maybe they'll get into detail. Maybe they'll tell you exactly where they've been waxed. Um, I think I'll do a lesbian gaydar list for you, Kuwait, next week. All for you, Kuwait, just so you know how to detect gay people. Also, 
are you dating anyone? So basically, this one's simple. If they say they're dating someone of the same sex, then you know they're probably homosexual. <laughs> That's just you know easy. That's easy. So um, okay, and this one was actually brought to me by someone. They said that this is a way to tell if someone is gay. Uh, but honestly, I don't know if I believe it because it's it's telling them look at your nails. So like if they look at their nails like this, then they're straight. If they look at them like this, then they're gay. That's what I was told. But I mean, I I maybe I'll test that out on a few straight people, and uh, I'll see if that works for you. But um, if their nails are painted like some kind of pink color or something, they're probably. <laughs> Especially rainbow. Rainbow is really, really a gay color. Uh, just so you know, Kuwait. Um, just so you know. Okay. So, and also ask them, do you know so-and-so? Like, say, do you know Brett Everett? Do you know Matthew Rush? Do you know any gay porn stars, basically? You name drop a few gay porn stars and see if they actually know these people. If they do know these people, then they're probably, you know, watching these people like on the action, like doing some dirty business with other men. So they're probably watching gay porn. Okay. And um, also this one, I'm not really sure about this one. This one can go either way as well. This is, what is your favorite martini? If they like like a pumpkin spice martini with a spritz of cherry, you know, they're probably gay. <laughs> I'm just saying. But uh, if they like, you know, uh, just a vodka martini, then that's very heterosexual of them. And um, I know all I like is vodka martinis, though, so that's me being butch. Okay. So there's a basketball player that just came out. He is the first NCAA, C NCCA Division II basketball player that came out. His name is Derek Shell. This is him. He is gorgeous and uh, he is there by a waterfall and he just came out and uh, good for you Derek and good for your boyfriend if you have one and um, if you don't call the show <laughs> no I'm kidding um, also I was supposed to be interviewing someone her name well she doesn't want me to say her name because it's, it's actually a man and uh, she didn't really want to you know you know give her um, she didn't want to say her identity. And I actually forgot to bring the CD in, so I will do that next week in case you are watching. Coincidental Minor is the name. And um, apparently I, she brought to attention something that I never really knew about transsexuals. They actually have to live as a female. And if they're not living as a female, then their sexual transition surgery will not be granted to them. And uh, even though they're paying for it already, they'll still, they still won't allow it. Only because they don't think it's healthy that you are living as a man and you want to be a woman if you're living. So you have to kind of keep this recorded with the therapist that you've been living as a woman for all these years, even if you're not. Um, but uh, apparently, she, he, she was afraid that uh, someone would see, and um, he basically made this CD so that um, this is actually Felicity Huffman from Trans America. It was, um, and that's a great movie. You should watch it. It's amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, I met him at a cabaret, and he was wonderful. And I'm gonna bring his CD in next week, and I'm going to um, show you guys. He actually played a few songs for me. And oh, I actually have a caller, so I'm going to answer this call. Hello, who is there? Hello, do we have a caller? Hello? I cannot hear anyone. Well, maybe they just wanted to call to hear my voice. Thank you. <laughs> Well, okay, so uh, I uh, have a caller, but I cannot hear the caller. Uh, is there a caller? Not anymore. Okay, he hung up, or she. We weren't, we we're not sure. But I think maybe they got shy. Maybe they were like, oh, 
he's actually going to talk to me. I'm blushing. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm sure you're not shy, okay? Um, also, um, I, uh, before we go here, I am thinking of some parodies to do. I was thinking of making a parody. I really want to make like a new parody. My last one was on the radio, and it was so funny, and um, it was all me singing, and I, I was in shock whenever I, was, whenever I heard I was on the radio. Radio, sorry, I had the hiccup. And, and uh, it was on the radio in Austria, so Lord has heard my song. Lord, she sings this song called Royals, which is the parody that I made. So if you basically search on YouTube, Lord Royals, gay version, I come up as the first one because I made this hilarious parody. And um, I definitely recommend watching it because a lot of people get a kick out of it. And uh, I plan on doing a lot more, and it actually brought up my subscribers. I actually got a thousand more subscribers after that video, which is an amazing number. Like, really, it really is. And it's already at 30,000 views, and uh, I just made it a couple weeks ago. And uh, I think it's quite hilarious that, you know, you can actually put something out there on YouTube that, you know, becomes famous overnight. And uh, you can actually get overnight fame just by sitting in your bedroom and doing something with a camera. So, uh, hello. I believe we have a caller, so we are just going to answer the call right now. Hello. Hello. Can you Hi. hear me? Hi. Who do we have here? Oh, my name is Dick. Dick. Yes. Well, hello, Dick. How are you? <laughs> I'm pretty good. I, I just kind of had a question of something you were talking about. Okay. Like that stuff you put under your eyes, that white stuff? Yeah. What is that, again? It's actually this uh, product from Lush, and it, it has a few natural things in it that actually lighten the eye area, and it actually, you know, it lowers the, um, the... Uh, where, where do I get it at? Oh, and you can get it at Lush. At, at Lush? Yes. Oh, I thought that was a bar somewhere. Oh, no, it's not a bar. It's actually a very nice uh, posh area. It's, it came from England, and they sell a lot of handmade soaps and a, a few uh, shampoos as well. So uh, are you having a, a nice day, Dick? Yes, I'm having a big day. A big, big dick, dick? A big dick day? <laughs> well, I don't mean it like that. I'm a very nice person. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, but I'm having a great day. I love your show. I'm a big fan. Oh, well, thank you, Dick. I love Dick. I do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a lot of people tell me. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm blushing. blushing. You can actually see it. I'm actually blushing on live TV. You know, I have found that most gay men do love Dick, like me. They love me. Yeah, I mean, like, if you say your name, like, somebody might have on, like, do you ever get people, like, where you walk into a bar and someone is wearing a shirt that says, if someone was wearing a shirt that says, I love Dick, would you think that they meant you, like, Dick? Well, yeah. Oh, okay. I would assume that. <laughs> like, when I see that in magazines, I kind of feel like they're talking about me. Oh, okay. <laughs> or, like, when all those apps, I kind of feel like everybody must know me. And they say they love dick, they love dick, big dick, small dick. I don't know why people call me small dick, because I'm a tall person. So, would you say you are <laughs> circumcised or uncircumcised dick? I am I'm, uh, circumcised. Oh, okay. So, so, what is your middle name, dick? Big. Big. Dick, big. <laughs> okay. So, Dick Big, um, what's your last name? Harry? It is. How did you know that? <laughs> oh, I just snorted. Look at that. I love Dick. <laughs> uh, All right. Well, I'm, thank you for that sign. And well, um, i got to go now. Somebody wants some Dick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, well, thank you so me. much for calling. Hey, me some Dick, so. Thank go. you, Dick. We all love Dick here in the studio. That's true. Thank I you for so. calling, Dick. 
You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> well, everyone, that was Dick. He just decided to call in, and uh, he seemed quite wonderful. He has a very big personality. Big Dick. Big Dick. I love it. It's great. There's so many innuendos you can do with that. But anyways, thank you guys all for watching. I believe we're going to end this show now because uh, it's been about 40 minutes. And, uh, and there you go. There we have it. If you want to contact me about any show ideas or any future interviews, you can contact me at davio at gaylifetelevision.com. And you can find me on there, and we can have a little chit-chat. We can do some emails back and forth. I love emailing. I'm a, I love texting as well, but I'm definitely not giving out my number, especially after that stocking list. Um, but uh, thank you all for watching so much, and we love you all here at Gay Life Television. Especially we love, we love Dick. So thank you for calling Dick. Okay. Everyone have a nice evening. Goodbye. <laughs>